Welcome to For the Quantum Grammar Shoot Podcast, the only podcast of its kind on the interwebs. To my knowledge, I'm your host, Colin Jason, I am Matthew Colin Glass. You may call me Jason. In this podcast, I will look at various subjects, topics, and personal experiences as viewed through the lens of correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. The awesome grammar technology brought to the public by the late Colin David Ivo and Colin Miller in 1988. And I was inspired to do this particular podcast topic because of some recent interactions I've had in uh, the comments field of my YouTube channel and also through confidential emails. Now, what I'm going to talk about is the way we as human beings perceive other people's communication. And this is the specific reason for correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, in my view. Meaning with correct sentence structure, we can get down to specifics, what we mean, closure on what we're getting at, rather than allowing the words out there for interpretation, where people can make all sorts of interpretations of what we mean in our words, when that's not what we meant at all. I find that many people, and I can even include myself in this uh, group, at times take things personal. We think things are about us. For example, if we look at if, if we have Facebook or something like that, and uh, we see someone that we know personally make a critical post, but addressed in a general sense. If we have associations with anything that's mentioned in that post, we will probably take it uh, personally and think it's about us and perhaps get offended or angry or upset when the person that made the post didn't say anything specifically about us it could be about something totally different but we take it personal that's why when you see in my reaction videos or even in my comments videos I set the stage by saying hey please don't take anything personal because that's what I do I don't take anything personal. I try really hard not to. But what ends up happening, especially with individuals I don't know who are new to communicating with me, they will take my straightforwardness, my bluntness in plain English as basically being accusatory or aggressive and they'll take it personal because they're not used to that type of communication. And that's what correct sentence structure communication, parsing syntax grammar brings to the table. It brings a straightforwardness and that, you know, that of course is going to reflect in your plain, simple English. I've gotten to the point where I'm very blunt in both communications. I don't dance around a subject. I say what I mean, mean what I say with plain, simple English when I'm writing it down. And some people do take that as being basically aggressive. They think I'm accusing them of something when that's not what I'm doing at all. I'm just being straightforward. And I've done the same thing in the past before I learned correct sentence structure. So with the balance of the honor and the grace, of course, I try to guide them through this. Because now, if they have misconstrued what I've said as being accusatory or aggressive, or it's caused them discomfort in some way, or offended them in some way, then I will try my best to clarify, hey, this is what I meant. I wasn't being accusatory. Now, of course, if you perceive me as accusing you of something, well, then I'm going to ask you to specifically identify what it is I'm accusing you of. 
And then once you do that, then we can get down to brass tacks and clarify things, which usually 9.9 .9 times out of 10 ends up in a positive conclusion. Because then it becomes clear, I'm not accusing you of anything. I'm just being straightforward about this, that, or the third. Nothing to do with you personally, specifically, nothing, because quite frankly, as I said, this usually happens with people I don't know. This usually happens with people that I've only just started communicating with. I don't know you. I don't know you personally. I don't know what kind of character you have. How could I possibly accuse you of something, right? I don't have that enough information to do anything like that. And by the way, folks, I don't make accusations. Like if you look at my YouTube channel and I'm critiquing grammar, right? I'm doing an audit or a reaction video. That's not an accusation. I'm showing you that it is what it is. The grammar is not correct in the context of the rules of correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. That's like uh, providing video evidence of a car accident, not an accident, because there is no accident, right? There are no accidents. Accidents presuppose there's no one at fault. So I've always had an issue with that term car accident. We'll say car wreck. In a car wreck or cars wreck, because usually there's more than one car involved, where you see someone, one car run into the rear end of another car on video. That's not an accusation. I'm not saying that uh, two cars wrecked. That Because you can plainly see that's what happened on video. It's not an accusation. It's something that act, actually happened. The accusatory part would be where if you say, oh, he wrecked into her. Well, now that's an accusation. But if you see a guy standing out in front of a parked car and he points at a car in front of him and he says, if you don't move that car, I'm going to slam into you and move it for you. And then they get into their car start it up, put it in drive, and then slam into that car, then you can say, well, he ran into that car. He rear-ended that car. That's not an accusation. That's what actually happened. You can plainly see that on video. You can plainly hear him say that's his volition. So these things that I put on my YouTube channel are not accusations. It's what's actually happening. An accusation comes when you're not sure about something. You're accusatory. A good example of this if, is if you would observe the mainstream media, the way they do reporting, the way they do interviews. It's not, there is no non-biased uh, reporting in mainstream media. There is no quote-unquote journalism anymore. It's all accusatory. And it doesn't matter if you're left or right Everybody's accusing everybody of something. If a Republican criticizes a Democrat, the Democrat is not going to uh, address the accusation. They're not going to address what happened in the Republican statement. What the Democrat's going to do is find something to accuse the, the uh, Republican of. So it turns into tit for tat. Always. This always happens. And it's the same thing with flat earthers versus globe earthers. It's the same thing with uh, different religions debating other religions. I mean, it just goes on and on. When there is opinion involved, there will always be argument. If you can't certify something, there's always going to be argument. Just like people argue about interpretations of the Bible or interpretations of the Koran or interpretations of, you know, whatever religious text you want to talk about. There's always going to be argument because it's all based on opinion and nothing 
is based on fact, certifiable fact, in the way that you can certify a fact right now in this now space in front of you, like uh, you can certify a car, you can certify wind, you can certify love, you can certify hate, you can certify a road, you can certify concrete, you can certify a feline, any number of things you can certify with a continuance of the evidence. But supreme beings, you can't certify them in the same sense. Right? So political ideas, you can't certify them in the same sense. What I'm getting at here, folks, uh, in a roundabout way, is that I'm constantly learning how to communicate with consideration. Because I don't want people to feel uncomfortable with the way that I communicate. On the other hand, I'm not going to soften what I say. Yes, I said soften. I know most people say soften, but there is a T in soften. So that's why I say it that way. I'm not going to soften my communication to sugarcoat something because it causes a slight discomfort or maybe a lot of discomfort in someone. Because if me being straightforward to you causes that much discomfort, then that's not on me. Especially if I'm not being aggressive, if I have no reason to be aggressive towards you, if I have no reason to bring that energy to you, then that is you bringing the energy, not me. Your perception of what I'm saying is energy that's originating in you, not me. And so that's something that you're going to have to work out. If I can see that, okay, hey, using this type of wording, I can see how that might confuse someone or cause confusion. And then I try to explain it. But if I'm being purposely aggressive towards someone, which you will see in my comments videos, when people approach me in a rude manner or a presumptuous manner, I will return that energy in an aggressive manner in the, uh, let's see, how can we say this? In the uh, law enforcement contingency or military contingency, paramilitary, this is what they would call force continuum. Where if you bring a force towards me in an aggressive manner, then I'm going to raise the bar to for the safety of my vessel, if it's appropriate. So that's what I'll do. But if I don't know you, and we're just communicating on a peaceful and neutral level, there is absolutely no reason for me to do that. No logical reason, historical or otherwise. So if you construe that as such, then that's energy that you brought to it, not energy that I brought to it. Do you see what I'm saying? I've done the same thing where I've had new people contact me in the past and I've construed what they were saying to me in, as they were basically not coming to me to ask me a question or to observe the terms and conditions of my vessel, but to challenge me in some aggressive fashion. And so I will ask them, is that what you're doing? Because that's what I'm perceiving your energy as. So what I'm doing when I ask that question, because I'm not sure, I'm trying to find out if they're bringing the energy or if it's something in my psyche that's triggering that energy in me. And it's my problem, not their problem. And sometimes it is my problem. And of course, I admit it and I stop and correct. And we move on and everything's fine. But what I've found, without fail, most people that do end up feeling that for whatever reason, I am being unduly aggressive towards them, even though I'm not. I find that ego or whatever else prevents them from seeing that it's them. It's their energy 
that's causing this, not mine. But they don't see that because of ego or whatever else or lack of humility. And they're not able to back off. They're not able to see that. And they're not able to correct it. And so they just break bulk. And folks, I've done the same thing in the past. So with the balance of the honor and the grace, I know what that's like. So I don't, you know, I'm not judging anyone out there. And uh, if some of the individuals that I'm referring to, I'm not, of course, naming names or anything, but if they're listening to this, I hope they can take this in the manner in the context that I'm, my volition is in, is in presenting it, is to present it in a way that can create an understanding, a cognition of don't take anything personally, especially if we don't know each other. If you're perceiving what I'm doing as negative energy, then that, that's not, that's your perception. That's your energy, not my energy. My energy is always peaceful and neutral. In every one of my introductory emails, I'm pretty sure it says in there, tells you what my volition is. Balance of the honor and the grace, position of peace and neutrality, maintenance of rule one, rule equal. That's what I'm doing. I'm telling you straight off the bat. Been doing it for six years, folks. Been doing this correct sentence structure stuff. I've been consistent with it. And... If I'm just meeting with you initially right off the bat, I communicate with you the same way I communicate with everyone else that I don't know with those three principles. I'm just very blunt, very straightforward. And some people who are not used to that might be, might, that might cause discomfort in them. But again, that's them. That's their perception. That's their energy, not my energy. My energy is the same with everyone. Unless, of course, I'm familiar with you and we have a trust count, then the energy is a little bit different. But if I don't know you, I keep the energy the same. With you, with him, with her, with anyone. There are no special cases that I'm especially aggressive towards or especially lenient towards. Everybody's the same until I get to know them. Rule one, rule equal. So I just thought I'd put that out there. And I hope the people that need to hear it will hear it, regardless of the choices that they make, are making, or have made. That this, this is my position. I maintain it. I stop and correct when I can see and cognize that I was perhaps mistaken or wrong. However, I'm not going to do that if it's just me communicating uh, on the basis of peace and neutrality, bringing that type of energy. If you're perceiving it as being aggressive or negative or causing discomfort when there's no substance to it, I mean, from my end, that's not my volition. And I tell you it's not my volition and you still feel that way. That's your energy, of course. And, you know, something that uh, you're going to have to work through. And kudos to those who can cultivate humility and are able to see these things. I know that for me, humility was the hardest thing to cultivate. I'm not saying I'm humble. I'm saying I try very hard to cultivate it over the last few years. And I've been able to see when, exactly when it's pointed out to me that I'm being inconsiderate. And so I stop and correct with all humility. I don't have a problem with that. It's no big deal to me. Ego is nothing to me, especially when it's pointed out to me by someone else. Because the last thing I want to do is have my energy be the cause of someone else's discomfort. And again, with rule one, rule equal, if that's not my volition to cause discomfort and anything I say has no substance, in it to be construed as aggressive or discomfort, yet the recipient of that, ener of that energy now modifies that energy into something negative, that's on them. That's not something that 
I'm accountable for. Do you see what I'm saying? I hope you do. I hope this was clear. This is a pretty deep psychological podcast here. So if you have any questions about it, feel free to comment. And maybe, maybe we'll do a live stream going a little bit deeper into it. But uh, thank you all for listening. If you would like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse syntax, grammar, I offer several choices. The first one, and the easiest one, is to study the almost 900 free public videos on this YouTube channel that you're watching right now. The second option, if you want to see new content, is to click the Join button on my main YouTube page or under any video that you're watching. Click the Join button, and you will see two tiers of membership. If you choose the second tier, the Loyalist Contributor tier, and you join that for a monthly support donation, you'll get new content, fresh content, exclusive content not available to the public every month. But keep in mind, there's already almost 900 videos here free to the public to study. And the third option is to contact me at the email address at the bottom of your screen. And this is for the serious students only. And apply for a correct grammar workshop. But please include your correct name when contacting me. And I'll set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation. And you and I will have a conversation. You can ask me whatever you want. I'll answer your questions. I'll do the same with you. I'll ask you questions. And we'll see if indeed you are really serious or not. Thank you.